In today's Madden 21 video, I'm going to be breaking down one of my favorite ways to beat the Blitz in Madden NFL 21. What's up guys, my name is Cody and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch today's YouTube video. Now if you've never met me before, um, basically what we do here at the channel, if you've never been to the channel, uh, what we do here is we do Madden 21 tips and tricks every single day on YouTube. Now we typically try to get uh, four of these videos out to you every single day. And these videos are designed to give you just some kind of principle, something to think about, um, a route combo that you can use for a specific type of situation, maybe a blitz, maybe a run defense, uh, maybe some running schemes, different things like that that can really help you and uh, help your game go to the next level. So if you're if you are interested in getting better at Madden 21, I'd highly encourage you to click subscribe. But I would also ask that you consider joining my community Discord. Now, Discord is a, a great place to be able to connect, not just with me, but with members from my community. And so uh, we're going to be able to help answer your questions, help get you better lab partners, and help get you coached up so that you can be um, even better of a Madden player than you probably already are. Now, uh, what I wanted to talk about is I want to today specifically spend a little bit of time on um, – some stuff out of bunch quads i think bunch quads is one of the more underrated offenses it's very very um it's a very very small playbook it's only six plays but i think these six plays are six really phenomenal plays you get really good routes out of it and i want to just talk about a very simple concept for beating the blitz whether it's man whether it's zone it doesn't really matter and so what i wanted to do is i want to show you this out of the two four five double a gap and uh we're going to be using two different types of zone blitzes we're going to be using um, we're going to be using a three deep three under zone blitz. And then we're also going to be using a two deep uh, three under zone, or I'm, I'm sorry, a two deep four under zone blitz. So nickel dog two here and buck zone blitz. So we can send blitz from uh, cover two shell. And we can also send a blitz from a, um, from just a cover um, from a, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, from a cover three shell. Okay. So we're going to start out in mid blitz and then we're going to graduate to some other coverages as well. Uh, and just kind of break this down. Now the play we're going to be using, um, and this is, I'm, I'm telling you, um, I just think bunch quads is so good. And this play right here is a play that I need personally to run more. Uh, I think this play is really, really effective. It's spacing again, and one of the most simple plays in the game. But I think it just does a really, really good job. And uh, I'm only going to make one adjustment. Now, you don't have to do this. You can leave him on this little streak here. But I really like to just put the running back on a curl. That's it. That's all I do. Um, and what you'll notice here is the alignment of this formation makes it really tricky. Um, it makes it really difficult to use her, in my opinion. But what you'll see a lot of times is they're going to send – um, obviously they're going to stand right here with their user. If they're playing from mid blitz, they're going to do that now because they know that you, I mean, you do have a tight end on the line, so they could, um, have to be worried about you blocking the tight end. You see here, I could put the tight end on a, a block and release, uh, fade route right here by flicking up. And if I do this, this is going to block a five man blitz, but what we're going to do is we're just going to anticipate that they're going to want to send the pressure. Now, what they're going to want to do is because of their matchups, they're going to want to make sure that they have this tight end manned up. So what they'll probably do is something like this right here, and then they'll basically lurk in the middle of the field. But obviously, they have to come down uh, for a split second for this thing to be able to work properly. So what we're going to do to mimic that is just put him on a uh, just a little hook curl to the right side. And what you're going to notice here is with this formation, if it's a man blitz, um, what you're going to do, your hot read is basically going to be this slant route on the left side. And so what you'll see here is a snap ball. Oh, they got a blitz. All right, I'm going to throw that slant route real quick. I love slants against man, and that's man press. I do want to show you this against man off, uh, meaning if they're off coverage manning. Uh, what you'll notice here, or not, I'm, I'm sorry, not man off, but um, uh, shaded coverage to the outside, or not outside, shaded coverage over top and to the inside. And what you'll see here, again, literally all I'm going to do is take Aaron Jones. I'm going to put him on a crawl. That's the only thing I do. You can leave him on this fade, okay? If you want to have something for press man, that fade's really good. It also opens up uh, windows to throw the slant late as it crosses the formation. But I actually just I just think the, the curl um, is just such a powerful route this year. So this is very simple. But, again, what you're going to see on this now, if they're, if they're not um, pressing the receiver, it's going to be worse. The slant's going to get open, and it's going to get open much quicker, allowing you to get the ball out quick. Now, here is the rule of thumb that I follow uh, when running this. Let's say that they drop this guy right here. So um, let me just show you really quickly a couple of different adjustments that they could do. Uh, one of those adjustments they could do is they could drop this linebacker right here into a curl flat. And I just want to show you the different adjustments for this slant because you need to know how this works so that you know how you can get stopped. 
So right here, I'm just going to drop this guy in the curl flat, and you notice that he's not going to stop the route. He's going he's gonna to delay it, but he's not really going to stop that slant. Um, what you're going to see more likely uh, is you're going to see something like this. Obviously, they're going to bring their user down, and they're going to probably throw this guy into a vertical hook and pass commit. Now, obviously, they're still going to be able to get the pressure. To get the pressure from 245, they have to bring their user in the gap, and they have to run their user off of the – like, they got to bring him down. They can't just – um, they can't just stand there. They've got to kind of bring him down at the snap. So it's going to be hard for them to get outside here to cover the slant. But this vert hook, what you'll see, he'll drop right into that zone, and he'll kind of play it. Um, right there, I think we just got a bad pass lead uh, from Rodgers. So I just want to show you a couple different things that the defense can do uh, to try to stop this play. So they can drop that, that backer on that left side into a hook curl, or I'm sorry, a vert hook. And what you'll notice at the snap of the ball, if I sit here in the pocket, there's not enough time to get the ball out, and it's going to be challenging to get that ball to him. Now, I will say what you will notice about this slant is it's a multi-window route, meaning you can throw it at different points. And so what that means for your offense is if I see he's in a vert hook, I'm going to throw it right quick, and that's going to get out there really, really quick right here, right in that window. Right at the snap of the ball, if I see that that, that backer is playing inside, meaning he's, gonna, he's basically – he's kind of just popping up into his own, right – um, you can throw this slant, and again, it, it just hang with me here. Um, you can throw this slant. Watch the linebacker. Um, this is pass commit as well, so he's in a vert hook, and he's going to go out there. So watch what happens right here. He's inside. I could pop it right in that little pocket right there because the vert hook is going to naturally shift to the middle of the field as opposed to the outside of the field. So now what I want to do is I want to show you uh, one other thing on this. I want to drop this guy into a hard flat. And I just want to show you what these different zones are going to do because you're going to see this. I promise you if you face this defense, you're going to see this and you need to know this. We're going to talk about the right side here in just a second. I just want to cover the solo receiver slant because I think it's I really think it's that powerful. Watch what happens here on a hard flat. Just let him cross here. As you see, he's going to get inside that hard flat. Now, one thing you need to understand about that is if they're using over the middle field, they can obviously now have time to be able to go over there and make a play. So you do kind of got to watch out for the user. But just so you know... Um, you can pretty much, as long as they are, if they're blitzing you, you can pretty much take the slant consistently. Um, you can throw it at different points, but right here, this is your first read. And if you can fit that in, you're going to fit that in. You're going to take that all day. Now, let's say that they use her, um, let's say that they use her that and, uh, just show this. We're just going to imitate this. Uh, I do want to show this actually real quick. Let me show you right here. Um, one of the other things you'll notice is if I try to man this linebacker up on square, I can't do it. I can only man him up on the tight end because he registers in the defense as a lineman. Now, if I man, if I took you know KJ right here and man him up on the slant, I can do that. I want to show you how that plays, um, and I just want to explain this again. Look at this slant because it's a man beater. It's going to come underneath that man coverage, so you can't cross man slants. At least I haven't been able to see that work very well. So you have some options. I mean, you have some really decent options. And more than likely, and this is just based on my experience running this offense, more than likely, as a general rule of thumb, when people are trying to defend you in this, they're going to go use that side. They're going to go use that solo receiver. And they're going to try to stop the right side with man-to-man -man coverage. Now what I want to do is show you the right side. The right side, what you'll notice here, is these little, um, these little underneath patterns are going to do fairly okay against man. They're not going to do great against press, man, and I do want you to be aware of that. But again, remember, they're going to have to shoot down with their user on here. So what I want to imitate here is I just want to basically run a little five-man pressure. Uh, and I want – because I, I think you'll see more five-man than you will six-man when you're in five wide because you don't have a blocker. Uh, I mean, you do have your tight end, but you don't really have your tight end kind of thing. Uh, and what you'll see is you'll see something like this, right? So they're going to go to the left side. I've got everybody manned up, and this is a, a simple five-man pressure. This is going to give you a little bit more of a – kind of a little bit more of a second to breathe here. And one thing you can actually do is you could take Taylor, and you could put him on a hitch right if you wanted to. And then you're just going to motion um, motion Vadis Scantling to the right on his little route right there. And what you'll see is this is going to create a nice little read against the mid blitz. Because the mid blitz can't – because of the way the mid blitz works and because of the way the five wide formation works, this is why I love five wide. This safety deal is not going to press him. Right, the only person that can press is a slot corner, and the only person he can press is that R1 uh, wide receiver. So, in a situation where you're facing like a, let's say you're facing like a five-man blitz, uh, I'm sorry, not a five-man blitz, but a five-man coverage, something like this right here, 
you're just watching the user. And if the user goes to the right at the snap of the ball, you're going to throw it to the left. If he goes to the left at the snap of the ball, you're going to throw it to the right. So you see this little motion right here that you could do. You get this out here, and then you can have this basic uh, backside read here. And what you'll notice is this thing, this hitch is going to beat man-to-man -man every single time. They're going to have to run something like a dime 146 to be able to get that press, and we'll cover that in just a moment. But I just want you to see this, uh, and I want you to see how effective this is. You don't even have to motion uh, him out. To, you'll see here, now if you don't motion that R1 guy out, you will notice the slot corner does end up pressing the inside guy, which I don't really think that's effective. Um, but real quick, let me just show you. So like if I had Taylor right here, um, I could pop him on that route right there. And you see that I can kind of get that out there, but it's kind of muddy. So what I want to show you, and, and really, like I said, you're going to throw the slant more times than not against man-to-man. -man, but if, for whatever reason, you know they're giving you, um, they're giving you some space here, on this inside guy, if you look right at this point right here, he's unbumpable. So I could just throw that quick. I could throw that hot. Now, if there are users there, obviously you wouldn't want to do that. And that's why I'm suggesting to go ahead and take Taylor and put him on a hitch route. Okay? Because that's just going to help open that space up and keep positive spacing um, for your your whole play. And again, with, with Scantling here, um, you... I would just motion him right in here, you know, it, it, as long as he's getting out here. And what you'll see is on this now, you know, they're just they're just kind of stretched in the middle. Now, uh, what's going to happen is they're going to start shifting, and they're going to shift to something like this buck zone blitz, and they're going to be in um, cover three, and they're going to basically um, send it from from a zone look. Uh, so I want to just show you how this would look right here. And uh, what you're going to see here is the basic cover three blitz. Now, I'm going to even give them an extra uh, zone coverage. Any zone coverage, this thing is going to torch. I love this play against zone. All we're going to do, same exact route combination, right? Same exact route combination. And basically, we're just reading. If they go with the tight end, we're going to hit one of our hitches. If they don't go with the tight end, we're going to hit the tight end. So right here, okay, they go with the tight end, we're going to take our hitch to Valdez Scantling. Now, right there, what I, I should have done is I should have low passed it. I didn't low pass it. But this is, a, I'm, I'm telling you, this is just a relatively simple passing concept. I just think that this is really good for um, five wide because I feel like five wide, if I was running five wide, the one issue that I feel like I would be semi-worried about is what do you do against, um, not the blitz necessarily, but what do you do against a good press and a good zone blitz? And what you'll see right here is I'm able to hit these curls. These hitches, these curls, they're going to open up for your offense. One other thing you could consider doing, um, and this is not so much more, this is more of a zone thing than it is a man thing, but what you'll notice here with Taylor um, or with Valdez Scantling is if, if I motion him to the right, I can snap the ball right here. And what you'll see is against man, that's going to get him unbumpable. It's going to get him open. So that's another option that you can have. And you see here, these are all really quick, uh, quick pop reads. Uh, even, against, even against a man pr pressure where you're getting one guy in free or completely off the edge here, um, the resources, and this is why I like five wide, the resources that you have, um, you just have better routes. And, and what you'll see, you'll see right here, uh, see how that R1 route is going to consistently come open. That R1 route is kind of your money route. That's the route that's going to be really successful for you. Okay, so what they're going to do in this situation is what maybe they might send it, um, and they might send the pressure from cover two. And I just want to show you what this looks like. And what we're going to do here is just kind of bring this uh, down and kind of set this up like this right here. And you'll see something like this. Now, this is, in this strategy right here, what they're going to do is they're basically going to uh, effectively run one high safety, and then we're going to drop this guy into a hook curl. So something simple like this right here, this could be something that you might see. And the pressure is going to get on you quick. I just want to show you what this looks like. And I want you to watch that middle player. See here, the middle space gets opened, so I can throw that ball as long as I have a second. But if they send the pressure like that, I'm not going to have enough time to hit that slant. So this is where you're getting into stuff that, you know, obviously you would have other routes that are uh, good against this because this coverage is not necessarily sound. This is where you would send that, you know, Aaron Jones on a streak and you're going to beat it over the top for a one play touchdown. But what I wanted, I just want to show you these underneath hitches and how valuable they can be for your offense. So here it is on this outside. You take a look. Okay, they go with him. And now I got that middle hitch. And I hit that right now in a nice quick read. Obviously, um, then the next thing they're going to try to do is they're going to go to some kind of max coverage. Guarantee you um, you're going to get max coverage out of this. And what you'll probably see is you'll probably see cover two with two purples and then maybe a deep blue, something like this right here. And uh, what I'll show you, this is dropping 11 people. Or not 11. This is dropping uh, 
This is dropping 10 people. This is just a spacing concept. It's a very simple concept. But what I want you to see is how good of a job this is actually going to do. Uh, again, just moving the ball up the field uh, and taking what the defense gives you. You see R1 standing wide open on that little hitch route. Even though we've dropped everybody back, even though we've um, really you know, kind of amped up our coverage game, I want to show you another coverage. I want to show you cover one hole. And we're going to actually press the coverage because if you press the coverage out of cover one hole, you'll probably do a little bit of, better of a job against your hitches. We've got two purples and a yellow zone out there uh, with a deep blue. Most people would say that's a pretty solid coverage. Watch what happens. You'll see here this R1 receiver once again pops open against that man-to-man -man coverage. Very simple, very easy, and very effective. The reason I'm sharing this with you is because I think that sometimes we overcomplicate offense. Uh, when in reality, you know, it could be very, very simple. It could be something as simple as this right here. And to be quite honest with you, I find a lot of fun um, in Madden right now of running these five wide schemes. But you'll see here, if they're not covering the curl, you take the curl. And if you don't want to run the curl, you don't have to run the curl, right? Well, you can, you can leave him on that route. Just make sure you're re-hitching Taylor and just getting a little bit better spacing here. Um, in my opinion, just this little motion out from the bunch quads does so much for this route because it allows it to beat man-to-man. -man. It allows it to be a consistent read for you against man-to-man. -man. Now let's say you go to something like the play, um, let's say you go to something like the play spot, and you're going to do that same motion out, not about us scaling. But this time, instead of running him on a, um, instead of running him on a little hitch, now you're going to run him on the slant, you got Devontae Adams on this little S post route, which is very effective. And then maybe what I do is I take my tight end, I put him on a drag, do something like this. Okay, straightforward, simple route combo. But if they're impressed man, now you're beating man to man. So the simple slant and the hitch combo, very effective from this formation. Another thing that you can do out of spot that I really like, you see how Scantling's on this little spot route. If you motion this out, pass like this to the inside, you see he's going to beat man to man coverage. Now, a lot of times, again, understand, they're probably going to use her that side of the field. Um, but now you're really stretching them because you had some really powerful routes on the backside and you got some really powerful route combos on the play side. Bunch quads put a lot of, I think it puts a lot of stress on people if you understand how to hit the quick routes. If you don't understand how to hit the quick routes, you're going to struggle with bunch quads. But if you understand how to hit the quick routes, you'll be hitting them, um, you'll be hitting them for very consistent gains. As you can see here, it's a snap throw against zone coverage as well. Um, and so it puts some stress on them. They got to use her that right side, but they also got to come back and use her this left side. And the beauty of the whole thing is it just, I think that slant route is so critical against man to man. So, anyways, guys, uh, I'm just fascinated with the bunch quads and the five wide. I've, I've been trying, I've been going back and forth between it all year long. And uh, I think five wide could be a viable scheme this year. I really do. Uh, I think that uh, if you understand how to hit the quick routes, if you understand how to take the check downs, the quick, easy stuff. Um, you could find yourself being very successful in five wide, in my opinion. So I'd encourage you to check out the bunch quads or maybe the five wide in your book. See if you can figure out the routes that you need to beat man. But I'm going to tell you right now, slant routes, post routes, uh, motion zig routes, motion drags, those are all effective methods. Um, so again, I just want to encourage you to check out a five wide uh, near you, right? This is the five wide out of the Arizona. This is the bunch quads, which is in multiple playbooks. Um, it also, we actually have a full guide out on uh, the Arizona air raid offense using both this formation and the empty base to create a really powerful five wide scheme that you can also mix in with your other stuff that we already have out on the spread and the gun two back uh, from the Arizona Cardinals playbook as well. So a, a ton of good material in that guide. If you haven't picked it up, it's in the description. But I would also encourage you guys, if you're looking for another way to get better in the game, I would highly encourage our text message membership to you. Our text message membership is a really, really great option for you. It's completely free. All you got to do is text me. My number is 812-216-3644. And every single week in our text message membership, we release exclusive tips and tricks videos that are designed to really elevate and talk a little bit higher level. We, we give you basically what uh, essentially what they are is their high level scheme breakdowns, right? We're talking uh, very in-depth scheme breakdowns. We have a, a, a gun bunch guide in there that's over an hour long. We have a gun uh, two or uh, I'm sorry, not a gun two back, a gun cluster guide in there that is over uh, 45 minutes long. We have a gun split close guide in there. We have a big nickel over G defense. We have a run defense in there that's really good. And most of those videos go really, really in-depth 
and they talk about the punch counter punch meta of Madden 21. So if you're looking to have something that's a little bit next level, I would highly encourage our text message memberships completely free. All you got to do is shoot me a text. Again, my number is 812-216-3644. And if you're looking for more from the Arizona Cardinals playbook, um, or if you really just want to be a better passer, I would highly encourage you to pick up my Air Raid offensive ebook uh, below. And it also comes with my full 46 defense, so it's my Madden 21 competitive bundle guide. One of the guys shot me a text uh, today, and he said, I just picked up your guide, been running it in some money uh, some money games today, and you've won me over $100. So uh, if you guys are looking for a scheme that's really going to help you be an elite player in this game, I would highly, highly encourage our air raid offense and our 46 defense. The 46 defense goes over the 4-6, obviously the 4-6 bear, the 4-6 normal, the 4-6 bear under, the 3-4 bear, the nickel normal, the nickel 3-3-5, and the nickel 3-3-5 wide. And then we have some stuff in there from the big nickel over G as well. So kind of a comprehensive ebook on the 46 defensive playbook. But uh, anyways, guys, I want to thank you for watching. And if you didn't know, I upload, like I said, four videos a day at 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. And then I also live stream every night at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. So we'll be live tonight at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. And that's where you can uh, get your questions answered live. We can play Madden if you guys want to jump on the sticks and, um, and and continue to help me improve and get better and sharpen my skill. Um, that's what I do every night at 10 o'clock. So if you want to catch the stream, I'd highly encourage you to come by the channel. Um, if you're in the Discord, you'll know whenever we go live every single night as well. Or if you have your notifications on, we go live on YouTube twitch and facebook gaming as well so anyways guys want to thank you for your support i really appreciate it and uh we'll see you on stream tonight at 10 o'clock